This all goes back to the basic teachings that the Sami, our white buffalo calf woman, brought to the Lakota people. As women, we're connected to the earth, to the tides, to, to the water, and to the moon. As women, you know, we want to feel safe, we want to feel protected, and we want to feel and acknowledge our, our spiritualness by praying. And so as spiritual beings on this human journey, prayer is a real great part of our lives. As Indian women, we have survived. As tribal nations, we have survived. We have survived because of our beliefs teachings and traditions. One of the strongest beliefs we have as Lakota people has been in the teachings of the white buffalo calf woman. In the old days, societies were real crucial to the makeup, the infrastructure of our, of our nations. There were societies for men, uh, women, and children. And these societies provided us with a way to be able to, to be a better person in our communities. The societies were, were created to help women and even men maintain a balance in their lives. How is the shelter making a difference here at Rosebud? With the shelter, um we, we do get all kinds of responses, you know. <clears throat> uh, some of the men, you know, look at uh, our advocates as troublemakers, you know, and, and these are the people that, that are angry. These are the people that uh, uh, would wish White Buffalo Cab didn't exist. Me, I am very glad the shelter is here. I have many sisters, I have many uh, relatives that need this place. We, we talk about men and their strength. There's a sad misconception that uh, uh, men would think it's strength or it's strong if they act out in anger and they, they hurt people. They think that's strength, but it really isn't. A man that is strong is a man that practices his humility, his prayer, his humbleness. And this is uh, uh, the, the differences that I, I show, I talk to the men about it. We talk about uh, how life uh, uh, itself, our role models, and how they put us into a, a training so that we take shape. Uh, and, and what they do, you know, what, what we look at them as their uh, ideal role model, oftentimes it's not ideal because they're, they're talking about violence, they're, they're talking about uh, humiliating or, or insulting women or degrading women, you know. And this is what's happening. So our young generations are going to come up thinking it's okay to hurt their partners or their children. And so this is what, what I challenge. There's much more to a man than anger and violence. When I first come to know about White Buffalo Calf uh, Women's Organization and the shelter was when I was in the shelter. And I had truly believed that during that time I had become an advocate while I was in the shelter. I started as a volunteer, and that was when I had met Tilly. Um, you know, there are times where, like myself, uh, going through a lot of this emotional and verbal abuse, and at some point the physical part had come into my life. I really didn't know that there was a shelter here until it was a, a friend of mine told me about it, and so that's how I come to the shelter. Uh, I was there for a while, and um, that's how I met Tilly. I met her at one of the support group meetings that she had facilitated a women's group. Very interesting, very informative, I should say. One of the things that I, I really like about the shelter is that there is no judgment 
uh, because when I was going to leave the shelter, one of the things that T had said to me, and I'll always remember that, is that she said to take care, and um, she said, we'll always be here for you. So, there are times where women, it's very hard for them to return because um, there's a lot of shame involved. That's another thing that we work closely with women is not to feel ashamed. And the most important thing is that the shelter is there for them. You see so many women that come through the shelter that are emotionally, um, you know, broken as well as at some point they're spiritual and spiritually broken. Sometimes the condition that they come in, in, um, it's just hard not to, you know, show any kind of emotions, you know, but just to let her know that, you know, we're here. Sometimes, you give that woman a chance, <clears throat> because there are times where a woman just won't talk. And that's okay. Just even the comfort of giving her a hug really helps. A White Buffalo Cat Feminine Society was created by women and for women. And so the society that, that has been there at Rosebud for close to 28 years that has addressed the violence that women experience in our communities, whether it's physical violence or sexual violence, is associated with keeping a woman, a, a Lakota woman, out of balance. And because we are women and we are responsible for the livelihood of our nations, our children are brought along, they're, they're swept along with us. And, and we, take, we, do, we take greatly to the challenge of being able to never forget our children in our work. And based on that, you know, we do practice, or I try to follow uh, the teachings of the White Buffalo Calf Woman. And as the story goes, you know, they, they tell us that in this camp, the people were running out of food, and they decided that they would send two men out to hunt for food. And so these two young scouts went out hunting for food. And they, w they went all over the canyons and the drawers, and, and, and they didn't find anything. And they kept going, and they came upon this high hill, so they climbed this hill. And when they got on top of this hill, they were looking around, and, they, and then they saw from the west uh, this cloud was coming. And as the cloud got closer and closer to them, in this cloud, was a woman. And as the cloud got closer, one of the young men had unhealthy thoughts about her. And so she signed to the man the universal language and, and signed to the man and challenged him to come forward. This young scout, being foolish, you know, went towards her. And the elements all came together. You know, we talk about the Wakia, the thunder being the Wyoming, the whirlwind, the wind. And they all came and they all protected this woman. And when it all quieted down, all that was left of this man was his bones. One of the first teachings that she brought to us as a people was that even in thought, women are to be respected. And so we teach this to our children. We teach it to our grandchildren. We teach these to our kids so that those generations to come will know what is expected of them. But those generations to come will also know how to treat each other as relatives. While we do the work within our tribal nations, we also realize that the work needs to be done intertribally the state, 
and a national level. Back in August of 1979, NCDB Steering Committee was invited to Rosebud. Women carried backpacks, sleeping bags, and flew into Pier and then came on down to Rosebud where they camped. When the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence was first incorporated in April of 1978, there was pieces of legislation in Congress, both the House and the Senate. When those pieces of legislation were introduced, they, they lost by great majority. Uh, and those same pieces of legislation were again reintroduced back in 1979 and almost every year. When those pieces of legislation did not get passed by Congress, the states themselves began to pass laws to protect women. The women in those particular states provided that leadership for their states to pass these laws to protect women. By 1990, every state in the Union had some sort of protection. And I remember going to, to the Hill when, for some of the first meetings when the national pieces were first being talked about. And I went to make sure that Indian women were not forgotten, that there was language in those bills that protected the sovereignty of the nations as well as the sovereignty of women. So the women that were doing this work, the VAWA legislation, knew that there had to be special language in there for tribal nations because uh, tribal women were certainly involved on the national level. By doing VAWA these 10 years, we want it to become something that will always be there for women. And so as women doing this work, we can't just stop because VAWA has given us the money to do this work. We have to make those connections beyond those sheltered doors. And that's what it's all about is that we do the work in the trenches, but we have to make those connections outside those sheltered doors to say stop. You know, this is the way you can stop violence against women. Oh, oh, oh.